kind of a, another miserable day out there. This winter's been really weird. It started off kind of promising, fairly cold, got a little bit of snow, and then barely any snow for the whole winter so far. It's not even cold enough for the snow to stay on the ground. It's just been kind of a mediocre winter so far. I haven't even gone snowboarding here in Ontario yet. Unless you go further up north and you do something like this. Or that. Ooh. It's actually pretty relaxing. Well, I guess I gotta figure out something to film inside the office today. All right, let's see, what do we have here? What, what can we talk about? Uh, anamorphic filters? Nah, I gotta, I gotta go outside and test those. Microphone? Deity? De Deity? Nah, microphone videos never do well. They just don't get views. Ooh, this is kind of interesting. I'm from the future. Apparently you can like fly drones um, and see the screen in here. Haven't tested them out yet though. Gotta do that. Probably shouldn't fly inside though. Workout headphones from WRZ? Not, it's not bad. Uh, who are we kidding? This this isn't a workout channel. Ooh, this one's interesting. Got my first uh, Atomos Ninja recorder thing. Um, basically, you can get more out of any camera. Definitely want to test this out, but I'm gonna have to go outside and actually test this out. So if that's not gonna work out. I got it. Let's talk about gimbals. Now, I probably can't do like a full review on these guys because we're stuck on this rainy day inside, but let's see what these guys are all about. And more importantly, let's talk about whether or not gimbals are actually worth the investment. These microphones have been more of a nuisance than anything. We still haven't used them and I'm just kind of in the way. Okay, so we have the... Feiyu Tech, I believe this is the AK4000. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what this one's called. And then we have the Moza Air 2. Um, I was a big fan of the Moza Air 1, so uh, high hopes for this one. Let's see what's inside. All right, so this one, at least at first glance, looks very similar to the Ronin S. Um, kind of the same size as the Ronin S, the Cradle looks like it's about the same size. Interesting, they have some sort of locking mechanisms to keep it from breaking uh, while you're not using it. That's a cool feature. Uh, yeah, looks pretty similar. Has the, the front trigger thing, which I really like on the Ronin S, so that's, that's a good thing. The usual stuff and this little focus wheel, which I probably wouldn't use, but this is actually interesting. I didn't know this. It actually comes with uh, a focus motor so you can control, even if you don't have uh, an autofocus lens, you can control your focus uh, using this little motor. You put this this around your lens, and then this motor would go on there and it would control the focus of your lens, I, I assume, with this little wheel. I haven't really done my research on this stuff. We're just kind of unboxing for now. All right, so that's interesting. Um, Charger. I, I'm a big fan that they now nowadays all of them are giving away these little tripod legs. Really handy for setting it up. Um, yeah, that's about it for this one. But this, is, I guess, this is the big, big thing on this. That, do you know how much these things used to cost back in the day? They were so expensive to get a motorized control for your lens to control focus. Um, so that's really interesting that they're um, packaging it with this. Uh, not cheap, especially back in the day. All right, let's take a look at the Feutech. Now the Feutech, um, at first glance, feels a little bit cheaper because of, of the case. Okay, okay. This one is, I think, a little bit more traditional. It's got a trigger at the back too, but it looks a little bit more like the, the typical ones that we're used to seeing. Um, the cradle size is pretty decent, but it's also a lot smaller than on the Moza Air or DJI. Also, this one doesn't come with a motor control focus thing. Um, got the legs. This is kind of interesting. It's got like this extension tube. This is interesting. It makes it like really long. So 
Um, you can do some different kinds of shots using this longer post, but it also, I feel like this would actually make it a lot more stable, um, being able to hold it like this, even though it feels, looks kind of funny to hold it like this. But um, when you're just having to hold it from down here, you can get a lot of movement, I find. Whereas if you're holding it like this, I feel like there would be a lot less movement. I, I could be wrong, I haven't actually used this yet, so. Okay, so we got the Moza Air 2 and the Fatec AK4000. Um, I'm actually curious, I have to look up how much do these things cost? Okay, so the Moza Air is $600. Um, which is pretty fair because the DJI Ronin S is $750, I believe, right now. Um, so this is $150 cheaper, looks very similar so far at least, um, and it has the little motor control for focus, so interesting. And the Feiyutec AK4000 is... Oh, interesting. It's the same price, $600. I would have actually expected it to be a little bit less um, considering um, the Moza Air comes in this hard case. Um, and then also I feel like the build quality looking at them is a little bit better on the Moza Air than the AK4000. Except for of course the, the extension that the AK4000 has and this one doesn't. And it also doesn't come with a motorized control for focus, um, but I guess it does have this extension tube, so that's different. And now, um, these amounts might seem like a lot, like, yeah, $600 is quite a lot of money, but when gimbals first came out, they were like $15,000. I, I think the Movi, Movi was the first one that came out, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was around $15,000, which is, so expensive that an amateur would never ever be able to afford that. If you're just kind of um, filmmaking for fun or starting out, you would never ever be able to buy a $15,000 gimbal. And it's interesting, now that the prices are coming down a lot, um, a gimbal is almost becoming like a staple purchase. It's something that you buy a lot earlier on than you would have um, when they first came out because they were so expensive. I would even go so far as to argue that a lot of people are choosing to buy a gimbal before something like a tripod or monopod, which back in the day, that would, that would have been stupid. You would have never bought a gimbal before a tripod. You would have just been an idiot, I think, possibly. Uh, so a lot of people are buying gimbals, but I think the real question is, is a gimbal one of those things that's actually worth the money or should you be investing it in different things like a, a good lens or tripod or monopod? Is it one of those purchases that you spend a lot of money on and then it just sits on your shelf and you never ever use it? Or is it better to just get one of these guys? A Steadicam. This one's a Glidecam. 2000, XR2000, this guy's like $200. You could probably get it used for even cheaper. Um, is it better to just get one of these guys instead of paying three times the amount for a gimbal? Of course, it, it totally depends on your situation, uh, what kind of filmmaking you wanna do, what your budgets are, all of that stuff. But I would almost say that nowadays you would wanna buy a decent camera, a couple lenses, so you, you have uh, you know a, a bit of a range in your focal lengths, a microphone, and then I might actually suggest getting a gimbal after that. I could be wrong, maybe there's something I'm missing. Of course you need things like ND filters and all that, but I would probably go for the gimbal nowadays before something like a tripod, which sounds absolutely crazy to say, but it does depend on your shooting style or what you wanna film. So for example, um, if you're gonna film a lot of like corporate stuff, sit down interviews, that kind of stuff, of course you're gonna need a tripod 100%. Um, but nowadays I use a tripod very little and if you're like me that you're interested in more um, kind of creative things, uh, music videos or epic cinematic travel videos or any of that kind of stuff, a gimbal is going to be way more handy, way more useful um, than something like a tripod. I did not think I would be saying that even, even like a year ago, but there's really two reasons for why I've, I've kind of had a shift in my thinking. And the first one, A, would be that the prices have come down a lot. It's actually pretty insane that you can have this really high-tech piece of equipment um, now for um, just like six, seven hundred dollars versus the fifteen thousand dollars you had to spend. Literally, you had to sell your kidney 
to buy a gimbal. Now you can just spend $600, which is kind of like the price of a medium priced lens. So um, it's not that absurd. 20 years ago, you would have never ever even imagined that you would have um, something like a gimbal um, that's this small and this cheap. And now again, you could go for something that's even cheaper, the glide cam. But my argument here nowadays is that this guy, even though it's easier to set up, I think, than a, a gimbal, it's a lot harder to use. Anybody can pick up a gimbal, walk around, and get steady shots. Whereas with the with the glide cam, it does take a little bit more practice. And then even if you're really good at it, there's situations like if you're um, you know filming out, out of a car or there's high winds or something like that, the glide cam just starts swaying around in the wind. Um, a gimbal can do much better in those situations. So. I really do think that gimbals have now taken over the glide cam, steady cam scene, unfortunately. And B, the other reason why I think that gimbals are actually worth buying a lot earlier now is the quality. The quality has gotten a lot better, even within like a year or, or two from when I started my channel. Um, the gimbals were a lot more kind of, um, especially these small ones, they weren't too good. They were a little bit sketchy in my opinion. Um, they would work a lot of times, but it would be really hard to, to get your camera balanced on there. The cradles were really small. And then even if you did get it balanced perfectly, the motors weren't that strong. So there would still be a lot of, you know, that, that micro shake. So they just weren't as good. And you know, they're building a lot of these new features like the, the triggers and learning how to actually make a really good gimbal that really stabilizes your footage but also works functionally and practically. Gimbals have come a long way. Now, why don't we uh, do a couple test shots and see what these guys are like. On the run from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Pride That's where I never thought it would matter If I'm gone by now So we did some tests with both gimbals. This is gonna be a very crude, very simple, quick review of the two gimbals. Um, first off, the Moza Air 2, I actually really, really liked it. For a $600 gimbal, it's very impressive. It's really similar to the DJI Ronin S um, in build, uh, big cradle, um, doesn't block the LCD screen, that's great. Has the trigger to change between the different modes and then also to set up your shots, really like that. Um, this one's kind of interesting because it has this plate that locks into here. You, you attach the camera to this plate and then it always locks to the exact same position. So in theory, you could have your gimbal completely set up and you just put your camera there um, and it would be balanced immediately. In theory, it doesn't always quite go like that. But yeah, this one was really easy to balance. Everything was good, I think. Um, strong motors, actually the payload of this, the max capacity is 9.3 pounds, whereas the Ronin S they're saying is 7.9 pounds. So apparently this thing can take more weight than the DJI Ronin S, which I'm a little bit skeptical of. I, I didn't test it, um, but very impressive. It just goes to say that it has really strong motors. Also kind of interesting, they implemented the like the torch light infinite spin thing um, just with like a double tap of a button. So if you're into that shot, it's cool. Again, it's kind of a gimmicky shot, so I'm really gonna use that, but pretty cool. Um, the things that I didn't like about the Moza Air, um, probably the biggest thing is the batteries. They're like the smaller lithium batteries that you have to put in here and take out to charge. Um, a bit of a pain, I'm not really into that. Um, I like that the DJI Ronin S, you just, quiet down. I like that the DJI Ronin S, you just charge the gimbal with a USB-C. Um, just really easy, simple. You never have to take out the batteries, put them in a charger. And weirdly enough, there actually wasn't a cord from the charger to actually charge the batteries. There's a lot of other cords that came along with it, but that one was missing. That's kind of 
I don't know why. Anyways, the Feutech AK4000 was a little bit of a different experience. Um, payload was again, more than the DJI Ronin S. Let me check exactly how it was. Yeah, the Feutech can actually take 8.8 .8 pounds. Um, again, the DJI Ronin S is only 7.9 pounds, but um, I'm really skeptical of that. I, I don't know how they got to that because a, we had a really hard time balancing this guy. Um, just a lot more finicky, a lot more tricky. I don't know what was going on exactly. And then even when we had it balanced perfectly, still the motors did a bit of that jitter, like kind of like it starts to rumble. You know, if you've ever used a gimbal, you probably know what I'm talking about. That was really weird. So even with just the Sony a7 III, it was still having a hard time um, keeping it stable at times. Uh, for the most part, it worked fine. Um, not too many issues once we were actually using it other than the occasional jitter. The things that I do like about it are this extension tube. It just allows for a lot more um, smoother and different kinds of shots than you could get with just this short handle. Also, I like that they have a little touch LCD screen so you can just change the settings really quickly. Um, that was really handy. But if I had to choose between these two gimbals, they're both the same price, I would definitely go for the Moza Air 2, hands down, um, way better in my opinion at least. Again, I always say go and test it out for yourself, but in my humble opinion, um, the Moza Air is definitely better. Moza Air 2. Now, if I had to choose between this and the DJI Ronin S, I would probably say save up the extra $150 and get the Ronin S, but there are some advantages to this gimbal, so it's kind of a toss up in some ways. Um, and also the whole motor that it comes with, um, the R DJI Ronin S doesn't come with anything like this, so um, it's cheaper and it comes with some extra perks. So in some ways this could be the better gimbal, but there's a lot of those like fine tuned things that when you're just using it, it just feels better using the DJI Ronin S than the Moza Air 2. So that's why I'd say maybe just save up the extra $150. So yeah, things have changed a bit. Before I would have definitely said to wait a little bit longer to get a gimbal, but things have really changed. They've really gotten better and the prices have come down. I would recommend thinking at least about getting a gimbal much earlier on now. Um, they're just a crazy piece of technology. The shots that we were getting on the surfboard, they just look so cool. Um, and it was really easy getting those. It took like five minutes in the end to get all those shots. Back in the day, it would have been absurd to get shots like that. It probably would have been impossible. And if it was possible, it would have taken a lot of work to get those shots. Technology is just awesome. Uh, I love seeing all the announcements from CES. Um, I've seen the new DJI controller. That seems pretty sweet. It has a built-in LCD screen. I'm a big fan of that. Nikon announcing that their new mirrorless cameras are now gonna be able to output RAW and then Atomos pairing up with that, they can do ProRes RAW, so that's really interesting. I'm very curious to try that out. And also I saw an 8K Sharp camera. I didn't actually know that Sharp made cameras, um, but they had a prototype for an 8K camera. Um, and the really interesting thing about it is it has this massive flip out LCD screen. So. Um, yeah, 2019, I think it's gonna be a good year for tech and cameras and filmmaking and all that. Now we gotta pack up these gimbals and all this mess everywhere. Ah, not fun. Matt, uh, can you help me out? Can you do a little favor for me? On the run from my given disaster. Speed away from the holy mind, pride